Hello folks, I'm Mal and welcome to Darkest Dungeon, Fiends and Frenzy update. Fiend and Frenzy is otherwise known as Build 8875 is the latest version of Darkest Dungeon and it just became available today, May 28th of 2015. It brings a wealth of quality of life improvements, new trinkets, new boss fights, tweaks, features, fixes, and most importantly, two new classes. Now, in this video, I'll go over the changes in as much detail as I'm able, given the limited amount of time I've had with this version in my grubby hands. Please note that I'm also releasing detailed overview videos of both the Arbalist and Man-at-Arm classes in their own dedicated videos, and there will be links to these at the end of this video as well as the description below. Okay, all that said, let's jump into the meat of this update, beginning with the new small features and quality of life improvements. First, we've got a new graveyard. It gives you a fancier headstone depending on the level that you were when you took your last breath of devotion to the cause. While not a major thing, I like it, and for me, things like this add to all the already cool atmosphere of Darkest Dungeon, right? It's just sort of a flavor thing. You know, you were you were more renowned, you probably should have a fancier headstone, right? <laughs> anyway, second new feature that uh, you may not notice right off the bat are new sounds for enemies, creatures, traps, scouting successes, and more. Uh, I really like this a lot. Again, this is another thing that adds flavor to the game. A couple of examples uh, of some of the new uh, sound pieces. I'll let you listen to these. Quickly the tide turns. Alright, now let's take a look at uh, a little bit closer at some of the quality of life improvements, and boy, they are awesome. I have to say a big thank you to the devs for putting in some of these. The first has got to be trinket management, which for those of you that have, have played Darkest Dungeon for any time at all, you know, it, it can be pretty tough sometimes, and now with these quality of life improvements, there's going to be no more screaming at the screen trying to remember where you left that last tough frame. So when you go to the trinket management screen now, there's three icons at the top. The first one, if you press it, will strip all of the, uh, the gear off of your current character roster. Oh man, that is just, I'm telling you, that's just a phenomenal thing. And for those of you that maybe haven't played Darkest Dungeon, I tell you, this is a great improvement. The next two icons allow you to sort either by class-specific trinkets uh, or by the rarity. Again, just makes things so much easier. Um, and again, thanks to the devs for putting that in. That was something a lot of us had requested, so that's a great improvement. Another really cool quality of life feature is on the provisioning screen. And for some of you, it might not be a big deal, but for somebody like me with poor memory, I, I love it. I think it's brilliant. So now it tells you where you're going, it tells you the type of mission that you're on, and the difficulty level. It's also interesting to note that uh, it would appear that the consumables, the provisions themselves, have reduced in price. Um, my guess is that's probably to help out the, the early game, which, let's face it, can be a little rough for the for the novices, uh, you know, coming to it, for a neophyte jumping in. Um, not being able to take enough supplies can be pretty rough, so I think that's a good overall change. Um, it'll make the, the early game a bit more um, palatable for folks. So, I, yeah, I think I think that was a smart move. Now let's move over to a uh, couple of other things in the town, or one specifically, the stagecoach. Now, while I have long since modified my, uh, my roster total because I needed the extra character slots for experimenting, um, the default now for the stagecoach at the top end level can be upgraded to a maximum of 22. The devs stated that this is subject to change, uh, up or down, um, is still yet to be determined. Um, I also want you to know that if you happen to, say, have 22 characters, and later it does change to, say, a maximum of 20, you're not going to lose any characters. Um, the game will simply not allow you to add any more, and your roster will be stated as full. Um, you know, please don't modify your stagecoach settings um, unless you're willing to risk a, a future save not functioning. Now, I've had no issues through several builds, but you never know. Uh, I will, however, put um, how to modify your stagecoach uh, roster size in the description of this video. If you're interested, you can do that yourself. 
Okay, it's also important to note that dark runs um, are, you know, or using no torches for those that uh, are uninitiated in the game. Um, stress is ramped up considerably. Uh, when you're running dark, the likelihood that the party will be surprised. Uh, crits are not nearly as forthcoming as they once were, but loot does seem to be considerable. Now, if you configure your group with party members uh, that are good with dealing with stress in combat or with optimal camping skills, you can still successfully leave a dungeon with effectively zero stress. I was able to do so on a level 7 champion run. Um, it was a long run. I used one camp for buffs early on. I used a second one at the end to, for the purposes of just removing stress. Um, what's unconfirmed, uh, but is likely, is that you'll have increased chances for ancestral trinkets as drops uh, with the plus to loot on dark runs. So again, you're having to make the choice of risk for reward. I just wanted to note that uh, the dark runs are not nearly as... Uh, easy uh, as some of us uh, have experienced in the past. Uh, when you when you function when you add in the the fact that uh, there's less crit chance, um, there's more chance for you to be surprised. There's a cap to how much food can heal now because your characters will get full. Um, that that all makes dark runs a little bit riskier. Um, but if you're like I said, if you're well prepared, uh, you can still manage to get out of a dungeon with basically no stress. Now, speaking of those rewards, there are new trinkets, and there's been many changes to existing uh, to existing trinkets. A cursory, a cursory glance over my trinket inventory, it seems like there's a better overall balance and some nice changes to class-specific trinkets. An example of balance. The common trinket, Archer's Ring, now only gives a plus 5 accuracy, while the rare, Sniper's Ring, now provides a plus 15 accuracy, but only in rank 4. It's like it was tailor-made for the Arbalist, which makes sense. Um, but, you know, again, as I'm looking through all of the trinkets, trinkets that you wouldn't give a second look at now are worthwhile. An example, um, the Brawler's Gauntlets. Uh, take a look at those. I think it's plus 25% damage in rank one. Um, yeah, there's definitely some things to, to look at. Uh, and a lot of the ancestral items, specifically the, the class, the class specific ones were also buffed and some neat new features were added to them. Like, you know, in addition to damage, they get plus to scouting or plus to uh, trap disarm and things like that. So again, take a close look at your trinkets because they have changed. All right. Now let's get to the heart of I'm sure what people are interested in the two new classes. The first, the Arbalist is uh a, a crossbowman with a mix of solid utility skills and the ability to remove marks or stuns for the party members and has exceptional camping skills. Even at low levels, the Arbalist packs a punch. I would rate the, the power of the Arbalist at mid to high, especially once buffed with uh, her self buff in the camping, which is called Restring Bow ability, and that's kind of akin to clean guns on the Highwaymen. Survivability might be an issue, but with proper trinkets like any other characters, you can mitigate damage. Since the Arbalist's strongest single offensive ability is Sniper Shot and dependent on Mark, your best to keep this character in rank 4 and then partner it with probably ideally an Occultist in mark, uh, that can mark from rank 3. Now, as to the Man at Arms, it's a little bit of a different story here. It's a frontline defender with strong combat and defensive abilities. With the ability to defend other party members by taking blows himself, deal out damage to the first three ranks with Crush, or setting himself up to take on the entire enemy trope by activating Retribution, which introduces a new mechanic called Repost. Those of you familiar with uh, Battle Brothers will understand this defensive ability right away, or perhaps those of you that uh, are familiar with XCOM's Covering Fire ability, if the enemy strikes you, you get a counter. It also places a mark on your uh, on your man at arms, which will further encourage enemies to strike the man at arms and consider that you build up dodge tanks or prot tanks in this particular role it makes them very resilient. So the more they're trying to hit your man at arms, in my opinion, the better. Now, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention the new boss fights and while not able to play through them just yet, I'm excited by the new challenge. They are as follows. In the ruins, there will be the Gibbering Prophet, in the Warrens, they'll be the formless, the formless flesh, and in the Wield, we'll face off on what looks like a super cool fight, the Brigand Cannoneers. 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this update video for Darkest Dungeon. As promised, links to the other videos I mentioned before are right here. If this is your first time watching my channel, please consider subscribing, and thank you for watching.